Welcome to MrClap.com's review of the Civil War, brought to you by Noble Review, concise review books. Let's first talk about who the sides are. The Union, President Lincoln, blue uniforms, the major force was the Army of the Potomac. They had multiple leaders, which ended in Ulysses S. Grant taking over. The South, the Confederacy, President Jefferson Davis, gray uniforms, and the major force was the Army of Northern Virginia, led by Robert E. Lee. The North had the advantage as they boasted a larger population, a stronger navy, greater farm acreage, more bank deposits, superior industry, and a greater amount of railroad track. But the South did have, according to experts, better generals. The war began on April 12, 1861, when the South attacked Fort Sumter. Ironically, no one was killed in the initial bombardment near Charleston. At first, Lincoln wasn't fighting to end slavery. He was fighting to maintain the Union. He wanted to secure the border states and stop the Confederacy from expanding further northward. The initial war strategy was called the Peninsula Campaign. They aimed to follow the peninsula of Virginia and capture Richmond, the Confederate capital. This didn't happen quite easily. The longer-term plan was called the Anaconda Plan. The longer the war went on, the better it was for the North. Because the South had a lot of cotton to export, they needed to get to Europe to trade. Therefore, the North placed its navy around southern ports and enforced a blockade on all southern goods coming in and out of the Confederacy. The idea was to strangle the South like an anaconda or big snake would squeeze its prey. By the end of the war, there was massive inflation and a shortage of common goods in the Confederacy. The North experienced inflation as well, as billions of dollars in greenbacks were put into circulation. Paper money causes inflation. The most famous battle of the war between ironclad ships was the Monitor for the Union and the Merrimack for the Confederacy. The Merrimack was attempting to break the blockade. The battle ended in a draw. Let's talk about some important battles to know. There was Bull Run in 1861. That's the first big battle where Stonewall Jackson received his nickname. The Union lost when they couldn't retreat on a road congested with picnic wagons driven by war spectators. Antietam was the bloodiest single day in American history with over 23,000 casualties. Lee couldn't move northward through Maryland. No one won, but the Union claimed victory and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. It's important to note that in the eastern theater of the war, the Union lost major battles, including Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville. Gettysburg became the turning point of the war. Lee and the Confederacy went as far north as Pennsylvania during the war. Traveling to the north, they wound up in Gettysburg. In a three-day battle, the Union won, and it was the turning point of the Civil War. George Pickett of the Confederacy led a losing charge across an open field. There were more casualties in the three days at Gettysburg than any other Civil War battle. In November of 1863, Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address at the battlefield in which he spoke about freedom, equality, uniting the country, and the sacrifices made by the soldiers. He began the speech four score and seven years ago, alluding to the Declaration of Independence. There was also the war in the West. The Union had a little bit more success there. You should know the Battle of Shiloh, which saw the Union win on the second day. It gave prominence to Ulysses S. Grant. The Battle of New Orleans was led by Admiral David Farragut, and the Union won that naval contest. Very important was the siege at Vicksburg. The Union won and divided the Confederacy in half by controlling the Mississippi River. After Gettysburg, Grant took over as commander of the Army of the Potomac. Between 1864 to 1865, he chased Lee through Virginia, fighting at places such as the Battle of the Wilderness, Spotsylvania Courthouse, Petersburg, and ultimately, Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. There were generous terms of surrender, and Lee's army returned home. The war ended with over 600,000 lives lost. The Civil War saw its share of total war. War used to be an event where armies would converge on a battlefield, but the Civil War changed that. William Tecumseh Sherman waged war on every aspect of society, including civilians and their property. He marched his soldiers from Atlanta to Savannah in 1864 and burned everything in between. Let's backtrack a bit, because the Emancipation Proclamation was really important. The proclamation was issued by Abraham Lincoln after Antietam in 1862 and went into effect in 1863. It freed the slaves in the rebelling states, the states that wouldn't listen to the Union anyway. Therefore, the proclamation freed no slaves. However, it did change the war aim from maintaining the Union to freeing the slaves. Also, it set a precedent for what would become the 13th Amendment. In addition, the Emancipation Proclamation kept Britain out of the war. You see, Britain had strong ties with the South because of the cotton trade. However, now they couldn't support the Confederacy because Britain had abolished slavery decades before. Slaves did escape the Confederacy, though. At first, slaves were acquired as contraband by the Union, and they were used by the Army for labor. 
The first official black regiment recognized by the Union Army was the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry. You may have seen them in the movie Glory. African American soldiers were paid a lower salary than whites for most of the war. About 180,000 black soldiers comprised about 10% of the army by the end of the Civil War. Even the Confederacy had plans for African American regiments by 1865. People think of Lincoln as being very popular, but at the time, his re-election was in doubt. In the West, there were these Copperheads, or Peace Democrats, and they were pro-Union but against the Civil War. One of them, Clement Vallandigham, was a vocal leader. Lincoln suspended habeas corpus and had him deported during the war. It is constitutional for a president to do so during such a conflict. But there was also protest back East. You see, the Enrollment Act of 1863 meant that for the first time in history, the United States could draft troops. New York City was a Democratic stronghold where there was immense opposition to Lincoln. People didn't like the Draft Act because the law favored the rich. It said that one could pay $300 to find a substitute to get out of the draft. The common slogan was, it's a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. There was also racial conflict between the Irish and African American populations as they competed for the same jobs and housing in New York City. The Emancipation Proclamation meant that New York's Irish troops would be fighting for African American slaves. There was also anti-war and anti-Republican sentiment in New York. Well, the riot erupted in July of 1863, and it led to violence against poor and affluent African Americans, Republican supporters, and rich whites. It should be noted that the South also instituted a draft with the passage of the Conscription Act of 1862. Still, Lincoln did win re-election. He defeated Democrat George B. McClellan, who Lincoln had fired earlier in the war from the Army of the Potomac. Lincoln chose Andrew Johnson, a pro-Union Southern Democrat from Tennessee, as his running mate. He wanted to attract Democratic votes in the North and the border states. This decision would later cause much conflict during the Reconstruction era. As far as Civil War innovations, it was the first modern war, and there were many to talk about. There was trench warfare, which became prevalent after Gettysburg and was commonplace during World War I. The biggest man-made explosion in the United States to its day was the Battle of the Crater in Petersburg, Virginia. That's when Union troops detonated an underground mine. There were ironclad ships with metallic sides. Great improvements were seen in submarine and torpedo technology, and also the telegraph was used for communications. Although the Union won in April of 1865, it would also be the last month for Lincoln. Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth in 1865 at Ford's Theater. After his assassination, President Johnson became president. And that started a big battle between Congress and the presidency during the age of Reconstruction. For a review video on Reconstruction, click here. For more review, you can get free flashcards and review sheets at mrclap.com. We also invite you to check out Noble Review in both paperback and ebook formats. Best of luck on your tests.